Okay, I've basically finally completed the uh, X68000 setup I've been wanting to have for a long time. Uh, adding more RAM and various parts until I finally got the machine I wanted. And the final part was this. Uh, this is the CF Aztec Monster Compact Flash Adapter for SCSI-based devices, which are made by some cool Japanese dude who's he's really more of a Mac fan, but being SCSI, it works just fine. Uh, these aren't the cheapest things ever, but they're very nice to have because it's it's got the uh, the basically the uh, IDE to SCSI adapter and the flash reader all on one little board. As you can see, it's pretty tiny compared to what a normal hard drive would be. And then you can just throw in a flash card. Two gigs is pretty much the uh, best number, in my opinion, for this system, uh, which I'll get to in a moment. So yeah, that's just a uh, look at the board itself and how it nicely fits in there. Uh, these things are about $100, to be honest. A little more if you're... I'm in Japan, so I'm paying local currency and pretty much free shipping. If you're importing these, they cost a bit more, but definitely worth it, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show the board, so jump cut as I close the system up and get it all hooked up again. Okay, well... System is fully back together, so let's just turn it on. And, uh, definitely boots a lot faster off the flash than off the old 81 meg hard drive, which still does actually work. It's still alive, but really no reason to use it anymore. Okay, so, um, what I'm using is that there's a, an, over on the NFG forums, uh, there's a great guy, I think his name is Adis, Itis, I don't really know how to say it, but he created a very useful hard drive image, um, that ten, basically you can run shitloads of games straight off the hard drive using this. Um, it boots up to, uh, LHES here, which, not my favorite operating system, but, um, it's quick to navigate stuff, like, uh, let's zoom in a bit here. But yeah, I got like, you know, games and, yeah, these are all games, all ready to go. Um, and they're grouped by what they require, like there's one meg games and then two meg games. and four or higher and um games four is actually my creation um the original image that was available for download is a very good starting point however it didn't quite do what i wanted it to i mean it was a great place to start but i wanted more essentially um the original image was like 777 megs but uh Basically, my goal was to, I wanted a more complete all-in-one thing. Also, some of the games they held back on putting on this thing because they only generally will work using virtual drives, some of them, which requires a hell of a lot of RAM. But I've got the full 12 meg, so I just kind of said, fuck it, I want it all. And to be honest, making my, my personal image was kind of a pain in the ass because I couldn't even format more than the 777, I essentially had to set up my partitions um, to use my full 2 gig card on the computer itself, then I ripped the image onto my computer and then imported from the old image into it, and then built on from there. So I've already added quite a few games, including some that have been totally undumped to this point, like uh, Largest, for example. Another thing is if you actually just escape and quit out of this, it takes you to a lighter version, which uses even less RAM, which is kind of neat. And this, I actually kind of prefer to use this version, because you can just click on shit. Like, so it's just a, instead of having to type in file names, you just scroll through what you want. So I don't know, um, let's say I want to play, how about largest? This is actually a, 
uh, three disc game. This one has not been, well, has just finally been dumped since I finally switched over to the Flash and I could get files off. I uh, dumped, I made images of the three discs and then um, it's now available on the NFG archive, a few other undumped games that I had. So, so yeah, like if I go to start this one. So this is one is actually using the uh, the virtual drive because I'm too lazy to hack games to run directly off the hard drive. When you've got the RAM, you just say fuck it. I've actually got enough RAM that I've actually got Valus 2 running on this thing through virtual drives, which is fairly impressive because it's a five disc game, so you need like eight megs of RAM to run it. But we got the full twelve, it's not an issue. So yeah, here's a little undumped shooter and it's three discs and like you see now it's telling you to put in the third disc but I've already got it registered to put in uh, using virtual drives is actually pretty easy Not, uh... It has a full like story scene, but it was loaded up and uh, But yeah, this game's kind of neat because it's got like this sort of Daria style capture system where you can uh, charge up and then And different enemies capture do different things And you can blow one up as a bomb and it, if they take enough hits, they'll be destroyed. But yeah, this one is now freely available. You can get it off the NFG archive. As well as a few others like uh, Overdriver. But, yeah, so I'm just going to reset here. So, yeah, I mean, once you have this kind of setup, um, there still are a few games that only run off a of floppy drive because of the weird way they work. But for the most part, you can most of the popular stuff you can run on here and uh, so as I said I've been adding to it like uh, you know I've got Valus on there and playing playing like Valus on this thing is well to be honest Valus 2 isn't really that great of a game but playing it on here or like playing for example Midgard's it's quite nice because like Midgard's is four discs Valus 2 is five discs and if you actually have enough RAM, you can actually play them without straight straight through uh, RAM for the uh, virtual drives, and no flop, no floppy switching ever. Cool stuff. Okay, so one of the so that was one of the things I wanted to do is just add some of the bigger games since I have the RAM to do it. Uh, most people probably don't, but I do, and I wanted to use it. The other thing I wanted to do was I didn't want to lose any functionality. From when I was in hard drive, remember I was running SX Window 3.1 and a nice visual CD-ROM, and I really liked that. So, the other thing I wanted to do was see if I could actually make a dual booting system. And I was actually successful in doing this. So, this is actually, you know, I, I dug through the manuals, and this was actually pretty easy to do. So, this was another feature I added. So, all you gotta do is hit reset and then just hold the help button down so you can't see my fan right now but I'm just holding down the help button on the keyboard and you get this little IPL menu so which actually allows you to select your boot partition and I believe all the SCSI models of the X68000 have this feature 
the ones that came before, like, the SASE models, I don't know if they have this in their IPL, but I believe all SCSI models do. Um, so it's set up to go to the first one by default, which is the basically where the games are. But my second partition, which if I select that now, it'll now boot off my secondary partition. Now, originally, I wanted to have like three partitions, but it basically won't happen. The system will not boot if you have three partitions. But yeah, so it boots up, um, and then all I gotta do is type sx and enter, and there's my sx window 3.1 um, with my fancy visual, you know, my full graphical user interface CD-ROM drive, and and there are a few games, not many, but a few that actually require sx windows. They run through it. Um, most of them are more cheesy, you know, desktop kind of stuff. But, uh... I like the op... But it was, it was one of those things that I was used to using this operating system, and I didn't want to lose it. So, yeah, I've added it. So with my new image that's already... I've also made available for download, so if you have a system to u utilize this, you can just write it to a flashcard and plug it in, and you don't have to go for all the shit I did to getting this to work. Because, yeah, the original image was great, but... In order to have dual boot, you basically have to use two partitions, and I had to do that from scratch, which was kind of a pain, and it took me about a week to get it all set up. But, uh, yeah, so as you can see, I got full du dual booting here, so got that fully working, no problem. So I'm just going to quit out of that, and I'm just going to switch back to my other partition. Now, as I said, I've, I'm using a 2 gig card, and then basically I have... Um, a gig set up for each, so the first gig is pretty much where all the games are. And even still, I still have like 300 megs free to add more games to. So, and the other partition, I only had SX Windows on there, meaning I had something like 950 megs free. So, naturally what I did was decide to fill it up with uh, MDX music files. So, like, if I load up the uh, MDX drive here, uh, this is a very nice player, and I'm still in the process of adding to this, because unfortunately, see, when I set up my original partition, or when I imported the game stuff from the old image, I could easily do that. However, Disk Explorer, the program I used to do that with, doesn't seem to like having two bootable partitions. If I tried to do anything with the second partition, it just told me it's corrupt, but it clearly isn't because it works on the real system no problem. Meaning to get stuff off the computer on another drive, I've been using my CD-ROM, which I've got about 5,000 something music files, actually probably more like 10,000, and so naturally Transferring those via CD-ROM is taking me a long fucking time, uh, but I've got quite a few on there, and there's some really neat ones. I mean, of course, you can listen to, like game music and stuff, but um, for example, there's a lot of some of the fan-made ones are really cool, like uh, where yeah, like Dungeon Explorer arranged. So yeah, um, I'm basically using the rest of my space to turn this thing into a giant MDX jukebox. And there are shitloads, and like the Konami folder has like 2,000 files by itself. It's ridiculous how many of these you can find. But yeah, um, the original 777 meg image had some music stuff on it, but not a lot, because there wasn't room for it. And they had a different image, which was like all music, but I didn't really want to open my computer and swap flashcards around, so I've been combining everything into one giant image that does it all. 
But yeah, there's some great stuff. Another one I really like is this, uh... This, this vapor trail mix is awesome as well. So, um, as I said, uh, my new image that I've, is freely available for anyone that wants to download it, which uh, saves you a lot of work. So then it was surprisingly easy to get the system to have dual boot with both operating systems, since you can't really put them on the same partition because the, uh, the boot up files are a little conflicting. But, uh... But yeah, so essentially, um, with this setup, I don't really even need to use floppy disks much anymore. There are a few games, I've got a few favorites that do not work and need to be run off floppies due to either copy protection or strange boot up routines. Um, but for the most part, I, mean, I don't know if I want to play Super Street Fighter 2, for example, just... Oops, not that one. Uh, da, 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 da. New, go! And there we go, Super Street Fighter 2. So yeah, um, I'm extremely satisfied with the setup now. Getting to this point, I'll admit, was not cheap, because in order to run everything I wanted to, I pretty much had to max out the RAM. Um, plus the flash setup itself wasn't exactly cheap, but definitely worth doing, because you don't really have to worry about one of your floppies dying on you, for the most part. and since you can easily back up your own personal image on a computer. So yeah, I highly recommend getting a flash setup and uh... And yeah, if you want to mess around with my dual boot image, feel free, it's already up and available. So uh, yeah. If you have a x68000 computer, I highly recommend this setup. It just turns it into a giant, like, gaming jukebox of fun. So if you got any questions, uh, just let me know.